to Spittengott's Eye. Episode 2. Awe. District Investigator Kayla Knox has been investigating the murder of Hal Porpender. While trying to reach Violet Hastings, a genetic researcher for a rival sage, who Knox believes has important evidence, Knox was trampled by a crowd of rioting heavies. She's coming around. Easy there. Don't try to move yet. Kayla, can you hear me? Hachi? Where's Violet? Violet? Somewhere between blue and purple on the color wheel, I think. Let's be gentle. She may be delirious. Violet Hastings, I was chasing her. Where am I? You're at Royal Victoria Hospital. Supervisor Rice pulled you away from the heavies just in time. Doc Stone says you'll be okay. I've got to get up. Got to find Violet. Better sedate her, Doc. Nothing else ever stops her. I woke up the next morning feeling much better. I checked myself out of the hospital and went straight to HQ. Kayla, are you sure you should be working today? That was a nasty blow. I'm fine. Thanks for getting me out of there. Now fill me in. Anyone found the murder weapon? Did the DNA scans pick up anything new? Uh, no dice. The weapon was probably incinerated. The only fresh DNA they found was yours, pro vendors, the heavies, and the bug eye itself. Maybe the hooded robe was as much about not shedding hairs as about disguise. They were either very thorough or very lucky. So what happened with the riot? Once the first heavy saw the mutilated bodies, word spread fast. They were coming in from kilometers away. Nothing the handlers could do to calm them. You know how they get in groups. It took a couple of hours for it all to die down. Nobody could drop off bodies in front of Abe HQ without being seen. It just isn't possible. Though they were seen, I checked the footage. A hover van with a pair of heavies. The hover van had Beck ID plates. Their transceiver was scrambled so we couldn't track where they went after. Presumably back to back. Why didn't the guards stop them? Regulations provide for two guards outside, and they hardly had time to react before the vans drove off. Our security is designed to prevent intruders from getting into the building, not to prevent people from littering the plaza. Our sage was well protected. I'm Suzanne Peters, Executive Chair of Security Management. Supervisor Gary Rice, Madam Chair. This is District Investigator Kayla Knox. She's been investigating the murder of Hal Provender. And his heavies. I'm well aware of who you both are. I came to inform you that our sage has requested a meeting. Right now? Our sage expects your immediate presence. If it pleases you, Madam Chair, might I have a minute to freshen up? It does not please me. Our sage does not care about your vanity. Now, follow me. Halt. Identify. Suzanne Peters, Executive Chair of Security Management. This is Supervisor Gary Rice and District Investigator Kayla Knox. They are with me. Okay. You won't go on. You'd think they'd remember me eventually. Simple creatures. They're just doing their job. Top floor, Abe's office. My child. My sage. Peters, you and Rice will wait outside. If it please you, my sage, I'm Investigator Knox's supervisor and would like to stay. 
I am aware. My child and I have matters to discuss privately. Leave us now. Approach, my child. Look me in the eye. These developments are concerning. Yes, my sage. I believe Beck is trying to weaken you. I knew Beck once, but I fear the sage I knew is long gone. Tell me everything you know. I found myself lost in awe. Abe had always been a god to me, an abstract concept who ran my life. Many a night, I'd cursed him for creating me. Now, for the first time, I was face to face with the reality of Abe. His body encased in a gleaming white shell, only his giant head visible. He was a freak, a product of genetic experimentation, like me. But he was redemption incarnate, ruler of most of the city, creator of thousands like myself. Where I was a failure, he was success, and I couldn't help but love him for it. All of the resentment I'd ever felt towards norms evaporated. I no longer envied them, their easy lives, free of the pain and suffering that I endured every day. All that ceased to matter. I'd been in pain all my life, and now I felt myself healed, at last, by the grace of Abe. I was purple, the color of joy. I forgot all about my intention to keep the details of the case to myself in the hopes of retaining control over the investigation. I told Abe everything. I knew I could trust him completely. Beck will be dealt with. We will not let these savage acts go unpunished. You will meet Violet Hastings today? Yes, my sage. Good. You've done well, my child. See if this Violet Hastings can be convinced to help us thwart Beck. We shall speak again. Thank you so much, my sage. It's my deepest honor and privilege to serve you. You may go. What happened in there? Are you okay? Never been better. Returning to the less restricted parts of HQ felt like coming back to Earth after a visit to Heaven. I had a quick talk with John Hastings, who agreed to go see his cousin and find a way to steer her to a restroom where I could talk to her after dinner. Finally, I sent Hachi a message to confirm the restaurant. I hope you're hungry. I ordered beef curry for you. Thanks. You seem different. What happened? Did you fall in love with someone at first sight and have a life-changing romantic day? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Try me. I met Abe. You should have been there, Hachi. He was magnificent. Just what did he do to you? Do? Hachi, he didn't do anything to me. He just was. He was everything I've ever wanted. He made me feel normal, accepted, loved. I can't believe this. You've been brainwashed. I've heard sages can do this to their shards if you look them in the eye. Brainwashed? Ha! If this is brainwashing, I'll take it. Why aren't you upset about being brainwashed? Because I was sick of being unhappy. I was tired of always feeling like I had to hide who and what I am. I've hated having to explain myself to every norm I meet. I've hated being looked at like a freak. Don't you see, Hotch? I had it all wrong. We're not the freaks. We're more like Abe. The norms are the freaks. We were never freaks, Kayla. It's easy to say that. I've been telling myself that for years, for my whole life. The moment I met Abe was the first time I really believed it. The first time in my life that I felt normal. Hotch, I don't want to go back to how I used to feel. You're serious. You really like being this way. Are you really okay with who you are? Everyone gawking at your tentacles wherever you go. You've never wanted to feel normal, never wanted to fit in. I fit in just fine. If I were like everyone else, I wouldn't be me. I guess that's the difference between you and me, Hotch. I never wanted to be me. That's what drove me to join district security when everyone told me it's not suitable work for a shard. Before I met Abe, I was always struggling to become a norm. Well? I'm thinking. About what? 
about whether to let you do this. Oh, for Abe's sake, Kachi, I'm fine. You're trying to infiltrate Bex HQ with a forged ID. If you're not 100%, someone else should go instead. My case, my responsibility. But you're... You're conspicuous. Remember, Beck doesn't have shards. You're going to have to pass for a norm, but your colors are so erratic right now, you look like a Christmas tree. All I need to do is control my emotions long enough to get past the guards and into the restroom. And with long sleeves, it's not that obvious. <sighs> Here. Uniform and ID. I added a pair of gloves and a surgical mask to help cover you up. Just say you're sick. Your maintenance pass can override restroom door locks or disable the door. Just be careful, okay? I will. I changed into the uniform in the restaurant's restroom and smeared what little exposed skin remained with makeup. If I could keep my mood from shifting too drastically in front of everyone, it'd do the job. It was a quick hover card jaunt to Beck HQ. Halt. Identify. Leela Fox, restroom maintenance. You skin look odd. Is you sick? Got a bit of a cold. You go see nurse. Hospital down street? I got no more sick days left. Besides, I've worked through worse. Don't you get nobody sick? I've got gloves and a surgical mask. Should keep everyone safe. Okay, you go on in. District Investigator Knox, over here. Hastings, I'm working undercover. I'm in Beck HQ. For Abe's sake, shut up. Lucky this hallway is empty. Sorry, I didn't think. So where's your cousin? What's your plan? Violet and I were having dinner down the hall. When I got your signal you parked, I spilled some food on her. She's already in the restroom cleaning up. It's single occupancy, so she's all yours if your maintenance pass works. Well done. You'll take the arrest off my record? I'll take care of it after I talk to Violet and make it out of here alive. Violet Hastings? Who are you? You don't look like maintenance. I'm glad the guard wasn't so skeptical. My name is Kayla Knox, Miss Hastings. You may have seen me in front of Abe HQ yesterday when I ordered you to stop. I'd like to ask you a few questions. What? You, you look so different. I have to get back to my cousin. He steered you here to talk to me. Sorry, it was the only way to be sure to reach you without being monitored. I've locked the door with my maintenance pass. You can't open it. Are you... are you going to murder me? What? No, I just need to ask you a few questions. I'm a district investigator trying to solve a murder case for Abe. I mean... please, can you help me? Help you? Probably. But first, what was it you were warning your cousin about when you told him Beck was planning something big? Was it the attack on Provender or something bigger? I... I can't tell you. Not here. I'm not... not risking my life. We can pay. Just name the price. Asylum. Is that what you were doing in Abe's Plaza during the riot? Seeking asylum? Yes. It was my day off, so I was... I was able to slip away without being too conspicuous. I had worked up the... the nerve to go beg for protection at Abe HQ... But I couldn't get in because of the... the riot. I'm sure we can arrange something. Now what is Beck planning? Abe's safety comes first. He's safe. I, I mean for now. He has two days. Two days before Beck moves on him. But please, you need to get me out. Then I'll tell... tell you more. What if I can't arrange something that fast? Tell me now and I can guarantee you'll be protected. I can't talk about Beck while I'm still in Beck's district. Abe could die if you wait. If they won't understand Abe's life, that, that Abe's life's in danger, tell your superiors I can be valuable. A valuable researcher. I've created a gene for human gills. It's up to you, up to you now, to get Abe to take 
like me, and I'll tell him about... I'll tell him everything. Personally. I'll see what I can do. She was visibly quivering with fear. I could only imagine what kind of a monster Beck must be to inspire such a reaction. The common speculation was that the reason Beck had no shards was that he killed them all, so that helped me sympathize with Violet's fear. I slipped out of Beck HQ and into the hover car I parked around the corner. I had to get to Abe fast, let him know the danger, convince him to give Violet Hastings asylum before it's too late. I was near the border between Beck's district and Abe's when an empty hover car surprised me, speeding out of an alley straight at me. There was no time to evade. I just braced myself and counted my lucky stars that I was flying close to ground level. Who are you? Lay off the back here. You talk to Abe, you die. Not fast, you die slow. <coughs> that just sampled. You hear? Yes. Hello? Is anyone there? Hachi? Hachi. Kayla? Is that you? What's the matter? Has something happened to you? Help. Help. Hachi. Help Abe. Abe is in danger. Help Abe. Will Kayla Knox pull through? Can she save Abe from the machinations of Beck? Can she save herself from Abe's influence? Tune in next time. The Spit in God's Eye is based on a story by Firestar. Adapted, produced, and directed by Paul Miram. Starring Kylie as Kayla Knox. John Hastings was portrayed by Splendid Bob. Hachi was Jeff Logovici. Gary Rice and the Heavies were played by Paul Nerum. Violet Hastings was played by Lindsay Townsend. Doc Stone was Steph. Abe was Kay Kumi. Suzanne Peters was played by Firestar. Music courtesy Adjay Electroquake Kumi and FreePD.com. Sound effects courtesy freesound.org. The announcer is some girl on the internet. This program is licensed for free use and redistribution without alteration. Available on the net at quietplease.org forward slash spit.